Hello everyone. So this is the first video of the first section of the first chapter of Math 207 uh, over the summer. Um, if you haven't watched the introduction video yet, uh, make sure you watch that. It's just sort of a short description of uh, how these lecture videos will go, how I will tend to split up each of the chapters, um, and what I want from all of you. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so most of what we will be talking about this first uh, half or so, well, the first few chapters of the class is how we can um, use linear algebra and matrices to talk about these solutions to systems of linear equations. So what is a linear equation? A linear equation is an equation uh, that can be written in the following form. And so here I've got a1 times x1 plus a1 times x2 dot 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 plus a n times x n equals b. And so what this is, is there are n variables where we're usually going to denote variables by x terms, um, but sometimes they might, we might use a different variable uh, that'll usually be stated. And then the b a1 through a n values are fixed coefficients. So they're just fixed real numbers that are usually decided beforehand, um, although sometimes they might not be. And we'll see situations where they might not be, of course. Um, and so an example of a linear equation might be something like 2x1 minus 3x2 is equal to 1. So here, 2, 3, and 1 are my coefficients. x1 and x2 are my variables. All right, so a system of linear equations is a collection of linear equations involving the same variables. And so all this is is just more than one linear equation, um, potentially. Uh, so more than one linear equation, um, you know, all containing the same variables. And so while this equation alone is just a single linear equation, if I were to add a second equation here, these two equations together give me a system of linear equations. So I have the equation 2x1 minus 3x2 equals 1, x1 plus x2 equals 3. And so what are generally what our main goal with equations like this are is, is to um, find values for x1 and x2 that make each of these equations true. And if we can do that, we say that that is a solution to this linear equation. And so a solution is an assignment of variables that make each equation true. And so a solution to this equation might be x1 equals 2 and x2 equals 1. Because notice then both of these equations are satisfied if we give them uh, those values. Uh, so this is an example of an equation that has exactly one solution. Um, there might be some systems of linear equations that have more than one solution. Um, as we'll see later on in this course. And so we will say that the set of all possible solutions to a system is called the solution set. is called the solution set to that system. And we call two linear equations equivalent if they have the same solution set. So two um, systems of linear equations are equivalent
if they have the same solution set. So, just for the fun of it, um, if you want, pause the video here and try and come up with a second system of equations that has the exact same solution set as this example here, so that that is equivalent. All right, so uh, one system I got that would be equivalent, we'll call this example two, uh, you might have 3x1 plus 4x2 equals 10, and x1 minus x2 equals 1 should be an equivalent uh, system of equations because, again, the unique assignment of variables in this case that satisfies both of these equations is x1 equal to 1, or sorry, excuse me, x2 equal to 2, x1 equal to 2, and x2 equal to 1. All right, so it turns out that if I'm looking at systems of equations, there aren't many possibilities for what I am definitively going to get. And what I mean by that is that, so I mentioned that, um, again, like certain systems of equations might have more than one possible solution. Um, it's also possible that we might get a system of equations that has uh, no solutions, but there's not many possibilities for the number of solutions that an equation can actually attain. Um, and so what I mean by that, we'll see here in a second. So every system has every system of equations has, let me get a new marker here, every system of equations has either no solution, um, and so I'll give an example here of a system that actually might have no solution. Um, you could have something like, say, x1 plus x2 equals 1, and x1 plus x2 equals 2. Uh, that would have no solution, because uh, there is no assignment of variables that would satisfy both of these equations simultaneously. Um, so one possibility is that every system could have exactly one solution, And we've already seen an example of that. Uh, it turns out this equation has exactly one solution. Uh, it's not extremely hard, at least for the moment, to convince yourself of that by trying to plug in values that you'll eventually sort of come to the conclusion that the only thing that can work is two and one for the assignment of variables. And so let's say an equation has more than one solution. You might ask the question, well, how many solutions could it have? It turns out that if it has more than one solution, um, it actually, in fact, this equation has infinitely many solutions. And these are the only possibilities uh, for the solution set of a system of linear equations. So every solution or every system has exactly one solution, has zero solutions, or has infinitely many solutions. And so an example of something that would have infinitely many solutions is a system that has a single equation of x1 plus x2 equals 1. And so notice this very small system of equations would have infinitely many solutions because there are a lot of different combinations of variables I could pick for x1 and x2 that would satisfy my one equation. Um, and so you can sort of think of this as having infinitely many solutions because in a sense, and we'll see that this is, tends to be a trend with how uh, this third option works, that because I have more variables than I do equations, um, it, you don't always have to have more variables than equations, of course, but uh, in this case, because I have more variables than equations, I can pick whatever number I want for x2, and that will sort of force x1 to be something, right? So in, in this sense, because um, I've got this sort of free choice for x2, uh, I can pick whatever I want, and that's what leads to infinitely many solutions. 
Um, and so if a system has no solution, then we say it is inconsistent, inconsistent. And so this would um, be option number one. Otherwise, if it has at least one solution, so option two or three, it is consistent. So a linear system that has zero solutions, option number one is an inconsistent system. So we would say here that this system is inconsistent. Well, these two systems would be consistent. Because they each have at least one solution, um, and therefore they are consistent. All right, so um, what I want to do now is introduce uh, sort of a, a more compact way for representing uh, systems of linear equations. That will be matrices. And then we will talk a little bit about how we can solve systems of equations, right? So, you know, if we were given, say, this system here and asked to solve it without already knowing the solution, um, how could we do that? And how does that relate to matrices? So that will be the final goal here of this video. So a matrix is just an array of numbers. Um, it's just sort of a giant, you can imagine it as sort of like an Excel spreadsheet uh, that just contains sort of a block of numbers. And for any system of equations, we actually have a very nice way of representing that system as a matrix. So. Let's again look at this original system of equations that we had, 2x1 minus uh, 3x2 is equal to 1, and x1 plus x2 is equal to 3. Um, we can represent this two ways as a matrix. One is what we call the coefficient matrix, and this just stores the coefficients attached to the variables. So notice here, it does not contain the B coefficients on the right-hand side of the equations. So it contains all coefficients attached to variables. We can also look at this system using the augmented matrix. Which contains all coefficients of the system. And so the augmented matrix of this system would be 2, negative 3, 1, um, 1, 1, 3. And so what we're doing with these matrices is we're basically assigning one column of this matrix, where these sort of downward lines um, in the matrix are called columns, and the horizontal lines across are called rows. So I'll make that a little more clear. So this is a column of my matrix, and this is a row of my matrix. And so what we're doing, each of the columns is storing all of the coefficients attached to one variable. So notice in this augmented matrix, as well as the coefficient matrix, you could think of this column as sort of representing the x1 column, right? Because it stores all of the coefficients attached to x1. You can think of column 2 as being the x2 column. Um, column 3 you can think of as being the b column. 
or just sort of the right-hand side of this equation, right, where I've got all of my solutions in the last column. And you can think of the rows as representing each of the individual equations in this linear system. Um, and so using notice that like this, this sort of condensed matrix form to represent the system of equations, um, it just sort of saves writing. And as we'll see, working with matrices and looking at matrices gives us a very, very nice way to learn a lot about our linear system uh, that we didn't previously know. And so one of the first things we're going to be able to do with matrices is much more efficiently and effectively find solutions to our linear system, uh, which we will see in future videos, although we won't uh, quite introduce it here. So um, maybe the, I still think the hardest part of um, linear algebra for me is keeping track of this, but an M by N matrix is a matrix with M rows and N columns. So whenever we give dimensions of a matrix, and so these are called the dimensions of the matrix. It's always rows by columns. And I still sometimes forget, and so at some point if I'm in office hours or giving a lecture and I have to take a minute to remember, is it rows, columns, columns, rows? Um, I apologize. But yes, an M by N matrix is rows, columns. So for example, we've seen two examples of matrices now here. We've seen this matrix 2, negative 3, 1, 1 and then this augmented matrix for the linear system. So this would be a two by two matrix because it has two rows and two columns. This would be a two by three matrix because it has two rows and three columns. All right, so now I wanna look at sort of a method to how we might solve um, this original linear system of equations that we looked at. Uh, in it, we're going to talk about a few things that we can do with our um, linear system that actually doesn't change the solution, right? That we can manipulate the equations in our linear system in a way that will not change the solution, but will that help, will help us to actually find a solution to our linear system. So we're going to end the video by solving even though we already know the solution, the linear system of equations 2x1 minus 3x2 equals 1, and x1 plus x2 equals 3. And in it, we're going to discuss a few things that we can do with our linear system. Also going to simultaneously look at each of these corresponding matrices that I get every time I I'm going to change my linear system. All right, so one thing we can do with a system of equations that is always valid is we can actually sum uh, constant multiples of equations to others and replace equations. And so what I mean by that is, let's say I wanted to solve this. One thing I could do is I could add 3 equation 2 plus equation 1 and replace that with equation 1. So notice, if I had 3 times equation 2 plus equation 1, I get 3x1 plus 2x1 is 5x1. Then I get 3x2 plus negative 3x2 is 0x2. And just for now, I'll write this in so we can keep track of it. And I get, well, on the right-hand side, I get 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 equals 10. And I want to replace that with this old equation 1. So if I do this, I replace this equation with my old equation 1, and I leave equation 2 alone. And so notice this gives me a new system of equations, right? I've taken this old system of equations, replaced it with this new equation that I got by doing this operation. And these two systems of equations are equivalent. 
they have the same solution set, right? Notice if I plugged in 2 for x1, well, 5 times 2 equals 10, that's still good, and 2 plus 1 equals 3, and remember the solution to this was x1 equals 2, x1, e x1 equals 2, x2 equals 1. So I can perform these sort of manipulations of the equations to work myself down to a solution. What I can also keep track of is what's going on to the matrix here on the right-hand side. If I write out this new augmented matrix, I get this. And notice, I could have gotten from this matrix to this matrix by taking 3 row 1 plus row 2 plus row 1 and replacing row 1. So if I added 3 times this row plus this row and got to this row, I would have gotten sort of a new matrix. Right? So we can think about sort of what's going on in this equation and this matrix simultaneously. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about more about what's going on here uh, later on in this chapter or, the, or this section or the next section. But let's figure out how this can lead us to a solution here. Uh, so notice next I can do one-fifth times row one and get a new system of equations, and now I'll just forego writing x2 out, get x1 equals 2, x1 plus x2 is equal to 3, and notice what's happened is I've gotten now this equation that essentially fixes what the value of x1 has to be. And this should be 1 fifth times equation 1. And so I could actually keep doing this now, right? I know that x1 has to be equal to 2. And so then if I plugged in 2 here, I could easily solve for x2 and get that x2 would have to equal 3. And so one way to solve a linear system is to perform sort of these valid uh, manipulations of equations by adding equations to other equations and multiplying equations by constants in order to continue to derive uh, systems of equations which have to be the same or um, equivalent, but that more quickly and more efficiently give you the solution sets that we're looking for. Um, and so notice, again, what we can do with matrices on the right here is perform sort of equivalent operations to the rows of my matrix and produce, again, matrices which always correspond or are always the augmented matrices to the new system of equations I get. And so we'll look more in this section and next section about how we can actually sort of just look at these matrices to eventually find solution sets. Um, but that will wrap up this first video. Uh, look for video number two of this section. We will go more in depth into some of this. And thank you all for watching.